Hello, my name's Joel Dunning and I'm delighted to be here accompanied uh, in this uh, video uh, with uh, Nestor Manuel Cluza, who's joining us uh, all the way from the Cardiovascular Institute of Buenos Aires. Uh, very big welcome to you, Nestor, and thanks for joining us uh, in, from all the way over there. Thanks uh, to you, thanks to all CTS editors for choosing our video for this competition. For this competition. And actually, I'm a third year resident in cardiovascular surgery in Buenos Aires. Uh, the surgery we are showing is the surgery that, that was done by Mariano Camporotondo, uh, that's a third of the surgeon of the institute. And the video shows a case of a 30 year old male patient uh, with a diagnosis of chronic uh, type 1 uh, DBK dissection. Yeah, and, uh, and as you said, uh, you won the residence competition. So we get uh, lots and lots of residents who submit videos. Uh, I believe this is actually your sixth video you've submitted to CDS yes. Net. So well done for being the absolute best uh, of this year's uh, uh, selection of videos. Thank you to you and thank you all CTS editors for choosing our video. So this video, as you say, was a, an amazing operation uh, doing a hybrid aortic replacement in a gentleman with a chronic aortic replacement. Uh, and uh, as perhaps you've just seen in the video, uh, you use a two-stage approach uh, with a, a four-branched uh, uh, prosthesis. Uh, Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that prosthesis. Do you always use this four-branched prosthesis rather than, say, just doing an island? Uh, and what are the advantages uh, of that prosthesis in this operation? Uh, we think that the four-branched uh, prosthesis is preferred in the, this kind of cases, mainly because we, you can do an osteomosis direct to the ostium of the, each individual vessel. Uh, in some cases, we also use uh, an island osteomosis. That depends on, on the surgeon's uh, decision at that moment. But this we, have to, we think that it's great because uh, it's easier and more anatomically uh, easier to, to make the osteomosis in the ostium of each vessel. And do your surgeons there do this in acute dissections as well? Yeah. This is our strategy also for acute dissections. And we showed uh, a chronic dissection because it's, it's an, an easier environment to, to film the surgery, but this is our routine for acute dissections. Uh, mainly the decision to cannulate the right uh, subclavian artery is one of the strategies we wanted to show. Uh, we think it's a, a really safe and, and a secure technique. And. Um it, a beautiful video, really well uh, videoed. Um, so, enforced postal and proximal aorta. Do you use bioglue as well, or tissue, or do you just reinforce it before then suturing the anastomosis? We like to use bioglue in all the anastomosis to make it static uh, control. And uh, and for this particular video, uh, the proximal anastomosis. Um, you didn't take any coronary buttons, you just did it uh, uh, above the annulus. Is that your usual approach or it depends on the case? It really depends on the case, uh, whether the aortic valve is compromised or maybe the, the patient has a previous disease on the aortic valve. In this case, uh, the valve was competent, was normal, so we decided to dip the valve there. And the sinus of Alsalva have a normal diameter, so we decided to make a suprasinusal anastomosis and a suprasinusal replacement of the aorta. But it depends on, on each case. Uh, you didn't do the mosis to the left subclavian artery, uh, and then later on, uh, you, you then used it a plug to occlude that. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you decide to do that. Uh, not implanting the left subclavian artery is not a routine, but in this case, it was an elderly patient, 70 years old, and the surgery was long, so in order to reduce surgery time, we decided to, to cover the left subclavian artery and not reimplant it. There is some evidence, mainly in TVAR, of uh, procedures covering the subclavian artery and not having ischemic complications. So we decided to take a, a wait and see strategy. Uh, 
and we will eventually do an um, extra anatomical bypass in the case of the presence of malperfusion or ischemic complications of the left arm. And uh, finally, uh, you are the best resident doing video. So maybe you could give us some, there'll be some residents out there going, I wish I could do the brilliant videos you're doing. Um, maybe you could give us some hints and tips. What cameras did you use? Were there head cameras? Or how did you actually video this brilliant operation? We use a laparoscopic endocamera uh, with an angle of 30 degrees so we can move and sneak in the, in the surgeon, surgeon field without uh, disturbing the surgery. It's a sterile uh, laparoscopic camera connected to a full HD, uh, HD video capture. So, so actually the message is it's pretty easy and as long as you don't upset your surgeon you can get a good video, hey? Yeah. <laughs> the surgery is the, the most important thing you don't need to, to, to bother the surgeon. Yeah, great. Well, very well done, Nestor. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for submitting this and all your other videos. Uh, you've done an absolute great job. And, uh, and best of luck with your residency. And I, I hope very soon there'll be your operations as well that we'll be watching. Everyone at CTSnet, myself, Joel Dunning, uh, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much for your work.